Hello. Good night to everyone. It's always a pleasure to be here, frankly speaking. It's, uh, and so let me express myself, my, my gratitude to the mentors of the, the center, because actually the message that we're going to reflect today, this message is coming from them, right? I'm just a vector here to bring the message and present the discussion to you and, let's say, motivate you all to think about that, right? Sometimes it's so easy when we talk about destiny, fatality, and choices. It's easy for us to outsource. It's not my fault. It's for someone. I didn't cause that. And here we are going to make a reflection on that. Is this true? Can we outsource any guilty? Can we outsource any blame to others? Or think about what we did, right? This picture right here, uh, Tim, yeah, okay, here. This picture right here, let's warm up for this reflection here. This picture right here, we've got a man. He's facing a lot of options here, right? A lot of options. Uh, away here, it's too long. Another one is a little bit shorter. So, but there was one thing in common with all the directions here. One thing in common. Can someone answer here? What is in common? All moving forward. Moving forward and up. Right? So there's two things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, we are moving up, right? That's a fatality. It's a fatality. Even if we, if we don't want to move forward and up, it will happen. Some will decide to take more time than others, take longer, but that's something that we need to reflect, right? And another thing here, who is going to decide for him what way he should take? Who's going to decide for him? Should be him. Only him, right? Only him. So there's no reason for us to blame another one for a decision that I made. I took this way, if it's wrong, fine, I'm gonna fix, take the other one, and so on. But don't blame others for the decision that you, that you took, okay? Nice picture, right? Are we okay to move forward? Let's move on. Look at this question here in the Spirit's book, 859. So are there events which must necessarily occur and which the will of the spirits cannot avert? Look at the answer. Yes. Yes. They cannot do anything, right? But do not believe that everything that happens to you is already written. So here is... As I said, it's easy for us to outsource. Oh, it, it's written. I cannot change that. It's written. I'm going that way because it's written. Look at the final phrase, the final sentence here. An event is always, is almost always, almost always, the consequence of something you have done. Cause and effect right? By an act of your own free will. We are going to discuss the free will here. What is actually a free will? In such a way that if you had not done so, the event would not have occurred. So it's only on us. It's not, don't blame others. Don't try to outsource your guilty. It's cause and effect law, right? Make sense? I like that. I emphasize it here. Do not believe that everything happens to you is already written. I'm going to explain in detail this phrase. Just keep that thing in mind. So references for today. Spirit's book from Kardec. That's the basic. 
he did a pretty good explanation about fatality and some questions at the end of the book. The Gospel according to Spiritism. We've got some chapters also explaining that. And the, the Comforter, if I could translate that. Unfortunately, we don't have it translated. It's a book with questions and answers. It's written by, by Chico Xavier, inspired by Emmanuel. Actually, Emmanuel by the hands of Chico Xavier. It's a nice book, and also he explained some kind of fatality in terms of determinism. Okay? If you want to go deeper, that's my suggestion for you to study. But I will highlight what we need to have in mind from those three books here. First of all, let's understand two philosophy. Philosophy is something that people are thinking, thinking, thinking. Sometimes they don't define anything. They just think and present the ideas. Basically, when we talk about fatality, destiny, we need to know two philosophical theories. One is the determinism. The other one is the fatalism. Right? Any ideas about the difference between them? What is a determinism? What is a fatalism? Let's go deeper here and explain. A determinism is a pure cause and effect, but is actually true for all events in our life? Is actually true? So we have a, a recipe of, a, it's like our life is like a cake that we have instructions to prepare, and then we are gonna reach something that is there? Of course not. Because if this is for every event in our life, the cause and effect law, of course it exists. But there are some causes that are not under our control. It's for the environment, from the people that we are interacting. So in case that for every event this thing happened, the determinism, so in order to achieve something, we just need to have Instructions. Follow the instructions. You're going to be successful. In real life, in most of the case, this is not going to happen, right? Except you're preparing a cake. In the cake, you've got the instructions. Fine, put there. Done. And the fatalism. The fatalism, that's what I said, the outsourcing. Oh, it's God. God wants that. It's written. It's there. So if the fatalism exists for everything, we are just a robot. So we are doing whatever they tell me to do. And this is not true as well, right? What's the beauty of the spiritism? Spiritism is in, is in what? In the determinism or is in the fatalism? Let's raise a poll. Which one? The way they were showing us the first picture. No, but it's going to be determinism or fatalism? Just the one at the top, the terminus? Who said that? She's right. That's the beauty of the spiritism. It's both. Free will. The fatalism. We've got a fatalism here. We are going to be pure spirits. I don't know when, but we are going to be pure spirits. And the determinism, cause and effect law. We've got some some events in our life that it's, you can see the cause and effect law, right? And that's the beauty of the, the spiritism. It's not determinist, it's not fatalism, it's both, right? Make sense right here? Good? Have anyone here, has anyone seen this film here? The butterfly effect? That's exactly that, right? For the ones who didn't see that film, let me present a spoiler, just a summary of the story here. It's, uh, it's a guy that he perceived that something happened in his life that was not so good, and he, he has the capability of going back in time and try to fix the cause. What happened in the future is a problem much worse than the other one. 
So if you see the terminant here and fatal end here, so you can summarize by this film here. I suggest if you if you didn't see, take a time the weekend and see the, the butterfly effect. Okay. Let's move on. That's why Peter liked that, right? That's why we cannot have determinism in all of events of our life. Look at this research here from 2020, right? We have 6,000 thoughts a day. How many thoughts that we have will be transformed into an action? Let's give just a guess, 10%. So we had 6,000 and 10% of the 6,000 become an action that will cause a consequence, right? 600, but look at that. We already have from this other research here from 2007, 200 daily food decisions. So 600 minus 200, 400, it's too much, right? How can you control that? 400 uh, activities or actions that you took will be in your control all the time. You don't know. That's the beauty of the life. Can we imagine that 6,000 thoughts a day? 6,000? It's too much. <laughs> yeah, additional two ones here. So let's reflect on that 6,000 a day. 200 for food, right? So that's the reason we don't have a determinism here in all events in our life. Chapter 10 of the Spirit's book. Let's understand fatality and choices, right? Choices and fatality. Choices is our, I am responsible to, to choose my direction. This is my direction that I'm going to take. Fatality. Someone's like the do domino here. Hit one, one here, and then it's going until the end. Right? That would be a fatality for this whole set of uh, dominoes here. Okay? But what happened in the real life? We've got the opportunity to decide. We can stop that right we can change we can change or we can leave it it's our decision but our decision will have what what we have it's the consequence right the consequence is the destiny don't blame the destiny because the destiny is coming from what you decide it's very easy for us, oh, it's my destiny. It's my destiny to be like that. Move on. So destiny is actually a result or a consequence. So, make sense? This logic here? Good? So the choices, right? What is the choice? It's our free will, right? We got the free will. I can make the choice at my own. And here's the beauty of God. This cartoon here represents exactly that. It's a joke, but it's funny here. Look at that. I'm not sure. So this angel is talking to God. This one right here is the God, representing God, for example. So I'm not sure if the humankind is a failed project. I'm not sure of that. So let's think about it that keep the perfection of God still in place, right? Why not use free will? And God celebrates, yes, I'm still perfect. I give them the, the free will. It's not my fault for this fail. It's their fault. They're doing that thing on, on, your, on their own legs. It's not me. I give them the power and they will decide, they will learn. Make sense here about the free will, right? It's our choice. So let's talk a little bit about that thing, but let's imagine the timeline for our reincarnation. We are all reincarnated here. I expect so. 
I'm not a medium. I cannot see spirits here. The ones that I can see here, we are all incarnated and we are coming from another incarnation and so on. So that's one timeline from one incarnation. So let's review what happened here. So we are in the spiritual plan here, right? We are not, we are not in the material plan. So we've got a reincarnation planning with our mentors, most of us. I would not say 100%, most of us. So if you want to see an example, uh, Missionaries of Light, chapter 12 and 13, the reincarnation of Sejus Mundo. They explain all the engineering that took place when we prepare the reincarnation, the planning, and so on. Right? It's, uh, it's an effort. And here we incarnate, and then we born in this beautiful planet here. So with our parents, that's a normal situation for all of us, right? And then we become a baby, a kid, a teenager, a young guy, and so on, until the death, right? Any questions here? This is a pretty standard one. So what is fatality here? Can someone point me? Okay, I'm born. I was born. And there is something that here, it's a fatality. I cannot change. What is a fatality here? After I was born. Taxes and death. <laughs> Taxes, yes. If, except if you're if you're a rich guy, you can live in, in, in an island in Caribbean and then you're going to free of taxes, right? But fatality here is that the place that, you, that you're going to be born, right? Your parents, your biological parents, you cannot change that, right? Your skills that you're going to be, you're going to have, those are fatalities. Think about fatalities. It's something that your free will cannot change. If I could summarize that, right? A fatality is something that you cannot change. But everything else you can change because you've got to, look at that, it's an important word here. Important word here. Planning. Planning is a plan. It doesn't mean that it will happen. It's planned to do so, but you've got your free will and maybe your free will will deviate the course by some reason, right? For example, Chico Xavier has one example. His original reincarnation planning was to write 40 books, 40 only books. And he wrote 500, 400 until his death, right? So he changed it. The planning was just 40, and he wrote 400 and something. Change it. Free will. He could decide after 40, I'm going to quit. I'm going to retire. I'm done. No. He continued that. Right? Makes sense here, fatality? It's something that we cannot change using our free will. And the choices of free will. The choices of free will, we've got a dotted line here. Right? A dashed line here. So is does the baby have free will? Does the baby have free will? Or something to a certain not the responsible makes stand. Yeah, he can he can cry, right? I'm hungry, I can cry. I'm thirsty, I can cry. But the free will is very limited because of his mobility. So as we become older, we've got more mobility, we've got more freedom, and then our free will will increase. And that's the same for us as spirit. As we become more mature in spirit, our free will become more and more and more and more. Here, as an imperfect spirit, we've got a, a limited free will. It's limited. I cannot fly. I can't fly. Yeah, yeah, the intelligence. And so we've got limitations to use our free will, right? We cannot, right now, we don't have the, the capability for telepathy. But Kardec presented to us that in the future, we are going to have that. Because we are not so mature. 
So our free will is limited. Imagine right now we've got liberty to do whatever we want. Like a pure spirit. How crazy is going to be the world? So with our imperfections here, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a mess, right? So God knows exactly what we need. So limited the, the free will. Okay? So I think we all know this difference, right? Fatality and free will. So are we capable to blame others? Yes, it's a free will, right? I can, it's a free will. But is it right? No. Yeah, I can blame. I can blame anyone. I can blame the government. I can blame whatever. But at the end, it's going to be my fault. Right? Any questions here? Okay, fatality. Let's give another example here. Uh, this pretty guy here. So from what we learned in the previous slides of reflection, this fact right here, is this a fatality? Sure. Yes or no? Is this a fatality? The guy went up to change the light, and then he used a small bench or something like that, and then he fell down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is this a fatality? No, it's an accident, right? Because he chose, he was not prepared, instead of using stairs or a ladder, someone to help him. So he preferred to do it by himself and then fell down. The consequences could be in the planning, right? In the reincarnation planning, the way that is going to be death or something like that. Yeah, game over for you. But in that case, we can see that it's not a fatality. It's an accident by his bad free will. Right? He did a bad free will here. He decided to change the light using not the right tool, the right, the right way to do that. And then, this is not fatality. So let's see what Kardec presents to us. What is actually a fatality? It's a consequence of the way of life that your spirit, consequence of the way of life that your spirit, not your body, spirit, has chosen as a test, atonement, or, mi or mission. That's a fatality. It's coming from your reincarnation planning. So you decided with, with, uh, with your mentors about that. There is a, I heard a, a lecture in, uh, from, a, from a medium in Brazil, and she was explaining that usually we are so motivated to reincarnate because we need to, we want to improve as a spirit. And usually we ask our mentors to compromise with 200, 300, 200 stuffs to do when we incarnate. And so our mentor, of course, lower, lower, much lower than that. 200 is too much. So, and she said that in average, our compromise is about two or four per life, per reincarnation. Look at that, two or four compromise. Could be a proof, could be an atonement, or even a mission. Look at that, four only per life. How many lives we would need to improve? As many as we need it, right? So it's a consequence of the spirit. It's our spirit. Yeah, of course. So not even, even if you got four, maybe you're going to change, you're going to... No, I'm not so going to do any that, of the four. Not even what you plan is really something that is destined to happen. Oh, no. Let's say I come here and my plan is to live 40 years. To marry it with someone and blah, blah, blah. That's a good job, but my lifespan is expanded to yeah. 70 to 80 because of my free will, because of the choices that I'm going to Or you can shorten your life. Or can shorten your life by bad habits, right? No, go ahead. No, yeah, you're right. So you can change. It's a plan. That's what I like to emphasize. It's a plan. But we've got the free will. We can make deviations of the plan. Better or worse.
determinism Yeah, so the determinism it's something that you've got a instructions to move to 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 perform and then you're going to have a result that you know the result. That's determinism. Here it's a little bit different. It's something that let's say uh, I did a bad stuff with someone in a past life. Then I'm going to reincarnate to try to fix that. Right? That's a compromise. So that's a reincarnation planning. But when I, when I reincarnate, my memory is gone. And maybe I made a, a bad decision and I, I didn't fix what I did. And then I need to come back again to fix and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. Like the fatality would be probably not being born very rich. Maybe in a humble family that needed to be uh, whatever, like the middle class thing. Yeah. Labor. Do it yourself. Yeah. Do it yourself. Yeah. And he doesn't have the yeah. knowledge to change, right? I understood well, right? In determinism, if you were to change the word, it's more like the cause and effect. Things happen because so you're acting yeah. in a certain you follow the instructions. Yeah. Exactly. is more if you to change, would be destiny. It's already set on stone. So you are coming and this is going to happen to you. There's Yeah. It's God. You can blame God by fatalism. You were born and you're going to die. There's no way for it to change. This is the destiny. Yeah. But in a philosophical way, not thinking Yeah, not in the spirit. Yeah. Whatever happens in your life is already set. That's your death. It's someone decided. Someone decided for you. Someone decided for you, and this is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the planning. Every planning, every planning who is familiar with uh, project management concepts, every planning, you've got milestones, periodic milestones. Uh, yes and no, that but the be, only... Well, that would be the negative side of fatality, because you could excuse yourself from, you know, it's really not my fault. It's, my it's God. Yeah, God decided. But the only fatality we've got in our life as a spirit is that we are going to be pure spirits. So we should not blame God for all the results that we have here, because they are consequences of our own free will, Right? It's a free will. <laughs> you just you just delay your products and stuff over here. Yeah. In the end. So let's move on. There is fatality, therefore, in the events that present themselves as they are a consequence of the choice that the spirit made of his ex existence as a man. So it's a choice. It's a consequence of a choice. Right? There can be no longer be fatality in the result of such events, since it's possible for a man, that's exactly what you said, through his prudence, to change their course, right? I'm coming here, let's say, preparing to suffer in a smoker family. But I decided myself to not be a smoker. It's my choice, so I can change the course. I will not suffer lung problems because I decided to not be a smoker, right? So it's a decision. And this one is the most important one. There is never fatality in the acts of the moral life. No one of us will reincarnate to attack someone, to hit someone, to kill someone. That's a decision that we made here. It's a free will. We are not reincarnating to, to poke someone, to destroy others' life, right? To kill someone. There is no fatality. Don't blame God. Oh, it's my destiny to be a serial killer. No, it's not. It's your decision. It's not. There is no fatality in acts of moral life. The fatality, the acts 
the fatality that I said, your parents, the place that you're going to be born, and so on, this is only for your improvement. It's not for your destruction. Right? Never. It's a pretty strong word that Kardec put here. Never. Never. We are not going to be here to do something bad or evil. Any questions here? I got a question, but Ed, as you were talking, I got a little confused. Okay, go ahead. This takes too long. This is going to be off because I don't want to. No, no. That's important here because we are here exactly to reflect. So if you have a question, so your question is about fatality. Remember the timeline? Fatality, we can say after you are incarnated, the fatality, what is a fatality after you incarnated and born? The fatality is your parents. You cannot change by your free will. You cannot change. Yeah. Let's say, for example, in the previous life, I was born in a family that had a lot of issues. Uh, people that drank a lot. Okay. I'm sorry. I was the one drinking a lot in the previous life. Okay. Okay. So this life, I come to this family that everybody drinks except me, and I just cannot deal with it. So it's a fatality to be with that family. I need to learn something. I ran away or I called something and now it's my time to learn. Yes. But I have the free will to change my life. So I don't want to be with that family. So I want to be away from that family because your I free will? don't accept that. So I'm using my free will to run away from my fatality. No, your fatality is to be, your fatality moral life. You're not going to reincarnate to be a drunk. That's your decision to be a drunk. Okay? It's your if decision. I'm away from that family. I'm not changing that course. That I, was I don't know about your planning, but... The so, if you were an alcoholic in a previous life, right? Okay. And then as part of your, of your plan for this life is to overcome that, right? You're going to be presented to a family like that. So Exactly. And that's going to be a trial for you because you're going to be tempted to drink because you already had that seed inside of you, exactly. right? So during this life, your what you want to accomplish is not to be an alcoholic again, but the temptation is there because you were put in a place where you were going to be reminded to yeah. drink. But when I decided to come to this family, I mm -hmm. knew what I had to do. Once I get here, I don't know that I decided that. Exactly. You don't know. So it's a fatal. That, it's a fatality that you were born in this family. But again, fatality, you, you, you have to stay with them for so, many, so, so much time because uh, sometimes you don't have resources to be to move. away from them. So when you have resources, you can use your free will and go. But up to that point, they're learning. It's either if you want it or not. So if you use your knowledge and you try to improve yourself, with all these studies and everything, you still don't have an answer, you should stay with the family or move up. Or maybe... Oh, Altari. You are an inspiration for this family. Maybe this family needs you as yeah. somebody that's not going to drink to be able to inspire them to modify themselves as well. So you, so you see, it's a whole net. I think, we have, I think we have to be cautious. And advising people to stay in an environment that could be dangerous. There's nothing wrong with walking away. Yeah. Yes, of course. But I, I, you've got to be cautious. Yes, it's a trial. Regardless of, of the judgments. What's no. that? What's that? Regardless of the judgments, because you run away from yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not running away. It's protecting yourself. It's protecting yourself. It's not really running away. It's in a way you just. God gave <laughs> So there's a story on two guys, right? They are together in a room and they're talking. And one is a professional who is very successful, the other one is a drunk. And the question is, one, so they're talking about, well, why are you so successful? And the other one, the first one answers, because my father was an alcoholic. And the other one has to buy her a drunk because my father was an alcoholic. So they had the same experience in the beginning, but the choices that were made led them to different outcomes. Of course. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. Adriana, please. 
So when you're talking about in very specific scenarios, they could say, okay, maybe my plane wants to come with his family, so I learn how to accept. So you're free will gives you the choice of staying there and learning or moving away. So if you are, like I will say, if you're in a dangerous situation, you have to preserve yourself and you have to move away. But the lesson, what you came here, the planning was to overcome and accept the situation. Mm -hmm. That's gonna follow you. So it may be that your lesson will become with your family, but throughout your life, you're gonna be attracting that kind of situation. It may be somebody at work or where you live or the family that you form. You're gonna end up attracting that situation so you have a chance to learn without having to put yourself in harm just to be with that family. Or you can be an example as well. You can be an example to your family. Someone in your family you can help to to be there. So she wanna she wanna present no she my question the most but of course everybody here was going back so sometimes when you walk away from that it's your choice it's your, it's your free will but again you're going to have other challenges on the same direction around you throughout the if life. it's uh, if it's something that you need to surpass yes, yes. and also the way you pointed out yes if you have to go and it's going to be there and it's your choice to have yeah but thank everybody I thought I said I thought what he was trying to figure out, and I was kind of like trying to figure out too, is whether in this situation, what would be determinism and what would be fatality again? Is that what you're trying to uh, figure out, or? Uh, so you say fatalism and determinism. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Okay, fatalism. It's a. It's something that it's a, It's written by others. Right. Someone decided for you, and this is gonna happen. That's a fatalism. Spiritism. There's only one thing that it's a fatality, fatalism, not a fatality, a fatalism, is that you're going to be pure spirits in the future. That's the only thing. Okay, what I'm talking about fatality, that's what Kardec uh, taught us about fatality, is that when you incarnate, it's going to be something that you cannot change by your free will. Okay, your family, you was born, you cannot change, you can move from your family but your family is still there. Your biological parents are still there. You cannot, oh, it's not my, no, you can be adopted, you can be, you can move, but your biological parents, the country that you were, you were born, right? The country that you were born, you can move, you can immigrate to, a, to another country, but you are still, you were born in the other country. So I had to be born in Brazil to learn about the Dutch and then I decided to move Maybe. to the US, so I Maybe. I don't know about your planning, so I don't know. We can simplify the following, because there is another spiritism principle that's in the doctrine that is very, very clear and it makes a lot of sense. We do not regress. Yeah. So it's like the idea of us being here now and we're continuing is for us when we live here to be better than... It's the first started. picture. It could be just a little better. Like yeah. In your example, you could still if your, if your purpose was to atone, not to be an alcoholic and make the mistakes you made in the previous life, we might fail and we might become we, we could be an alcoholic again. But by having that experience of the past, you will probably be less. At the end, yeah. you will still learn because we always learn. And you're probably not going to have full completion of your mission, but it's still going to be better. And then yeah. the next time you try to go back, but we don't go back. We always go yeah, that's uh, Valdo. Unfortunately, you missed the first slide. The first slide we I presented a picture, one man deciding, and all the ways are going up and forward, right? There's no regression. So that's the reason Kardec presented here that never, you're, you're not gonna reincarnate here to decrease in your. Evaluation. Well, maybe the thought is, yes, you were born in this family, you're not going to change that. But no, you don't need to stay with the family. The family is not staying with the family. It's your free will. You're going to learn something or not. But the family is, yes, you belong to that family, no matter what you do. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Free will. Do we really know what is a free will? 
So look at that. This is a, another joke here, right? Adam. 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 God gave to him, I'm going to give you the free will, right? And then on the other side, the snake gave him an apple. What he did? Immediately he ate the apple. And God asked him, do you know it's a free will? He said, no. And we don't know even nowadays, right? Even nowadays we don't know that. So if we could summarize free will. So I think this is the best one I found to summarize what is a free will. It's a Paul. It's the first letter from Paul to Corinthians. That's what he said. I have the right to do anything. I can do anything. But not everything is beneficial. Beneficial to me or to others. Right? I have the right to do anything. But I will not be mastered by anything. Which means the second sentence is that I'm going to guide it by someone. So I'm going to follow him wherever he goes. And I'm not going to be mastered by him because I've got my free will to decide if this is the right direction or not. Right? So that's a summary of what is a free will. Paul gave to us. Thank you, Paul, for this summary here. And we are still trying to learn that. I can do whatever I want to do, but think about if it's beneficial. At the end of the, the lecture, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show five tips on how to proceed a good free will. Right? Five tips only. Okay, free will, chapter 16, the gospel according to Spiritism, item number eight. By giving humans free will, God wanted them to reach the point where, through their own experience, right? Own experience. It's not someone telling you what to do. Your experience, you're going to decide. They could distinguish between good and evil. So you're going to use your judgment. This is the right direction. This is the direction that I should not go. But you can go to the wrong direction if you want. It's your free will. And that the practice of the good be, re, be the result of their own efforts and will. So let's celebrate. If you make a good choice, let's celebrate, right? If you make a bad choice, let's celebrate as well because the bad choice will educate you. Use your free will, right? And once again, fatalistically, Humans must not be fatalistic, led either to good or evil. Right? Fatalistic. God is saying, go there, go. No, it's your choice to decide. Or they would be nothing more than passive and responsible animal like instruments. You're going to be a robot. Every, someone is controlling me. I'm going this way. I'll go this way. Go this way. No. You're going to decide what way you're going to do. Determinism, it's a recipe that you're going to follow and you're going to have a result, right? But he is a robot. We are not robots. We are here to learn and to learn by experience, right? We're going to make mistakes. The mistakes will have a consequence. The consequence will, will teach us what we need to do to improve. Basically, is this, right? Uh, the comforter, the question, look at that, that's a good question there. Are there determinism, a recipe to follow, and free will at the same time? Look at this good question here from Emmanuel, right? Are there determinism and free will at the same time? Determinism, let's refresh, it's instructions to follow and then you reach a result. And free will, I can decide, okay, that's, a, that's instruction, but in instruction number three, I'm going to change because I think this is the best way to do that. Right? It's a decision. What is the answer? Once? Yes. Coexist in life. Coexist in life. You've got some 
if I study hard in the school for four years, five years, at the end I'm going to graduate, right? If I don't study, I'm not going to graduate. That's a instructions to follow, right? But maybe, let's say I'm planning to graduate in four years. But unfortunately, I had a problem, and I postponed that. Is this problem caused by, by my bad decision? Or is this problem caused by an external thing that I decided, okay, let me help my mom right now because I need to take care of her. It's a good decision, right? So I postponed my graduation because I will take care of my mom. Make sense? But at the end, you're going to be back to study and then you're going to graduate. Determinism. Look at that. That's funny here. It's absolute in the lowest evolutionary layers. So it's uh, the free will. If you get a dog, you don't see a free will on them. You don't see a free will in a dog, right? It's instinct. If he want to eat, he, go, he will find something to eat. It's instinct, but it's not a free will, right? And free will, it expands with the values of education experience. As we become more, so in the, in the scale of evolution, so we are now in spirits, imperfect spirits, you're going to become, until the pure spirits, a pure spirit it's, has much more freedom than us, much, much more freedom than us. Look at Jesus, look at what he did here when he was incarnated. His freedom to be in two places at the same time. We don't have that yet, but we're going to be there, fatalistically, right? And those two things merge in, right? Over both are based on the law of love. That's the reason we are not going to, we never be incarnated for bad purposes. Because we are supported by the law of love. And the law of love is what? Fraternity. Help each other. Right? Charity. And so on. The man himself, as he becomes responsible, organizes the determinism. I know the way. My experience taught me that if I follow that thing, I'm going to reach this result because my experience taught me that. So I increase my, my book of recipes. I know what I need to do in the situation because of my experience. And this happened in our life while incarnated, right? As we become older, we face it more experience. We know how to deal with some bad stuff, different than a kid. So that's, we can see that thing. So we organize the determinism of his existence, aggravating or softening. That's what Rudy mentioned, right? We can aggravate. Let's say your planning was to help your family to surpass this problem and you gave away. Maybe you're going to aggravate your thing because your planning was to help them. Could be, could be. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So it depends, right? We can aggravate or we can soften. So we need to ask ourselves. Yeah, of course. Of course. So how do we exercise our free will? So we call in Brazil the guy who has the, the short, uh, not short skills, when he got a dynamite. Short fuse. Short fuse. Yes, I forgot that. Yeah. So the short fuse explode with something. And then the consequences sometimes are not so good. Right? In traffic, we've seen a lot of people doing that. Right? They explode by some silly stuff. They explode. According to rules, it's the one without any flexibility. 
He just follow the rules, follow the rules. Even if the rule is good or bad, I don't care. I'm going to follow the rules. So it seems that they don't use the brain to think about, is this the right situation to follow that rule? Right? Another way is delegating the choice to others. Mm, that's not so good, right? Sometimes we decide that thing for me. I don't want to talk to him. Talk to him. So delegate. Avoiding a choice. Sometimes we do that. We need to make a choice and then we push back, push back, push back and don't decide. Should that exercise in our free will by all those points? No, that's the way we exercise, we execute our free will. The way we execute the free will is from these points right here. And then I'm going to show you a tip on how you're going to practice your free will in, a, let's say, in, a, I would not say the, a good way, but in a way that you can rational. By executing mean display. Yeah. That's how we display. How, display. how you can see that. So not no, it's not practicing. It's the way that we, it's the way, <coughs> it's the way that we conduct the free will. You can see a lot of examples like that. Yeah. Our, our our ego will control that. It's like they say, you know, if there is so much time you can hit your head against a wall, eventually your head is going to hurt so much you're going to stop that. Another way here would be choosing a, a balanced and thoughtful way. This sometimes is good, but sometimes you need to react fast, right? You need to decide fast. And this sometimes will take longer for you to decide. Prioritizing. As I like to say, so if you see any of my previous lectures, I like to say that prioritizing, it's, uh, it's key for us. It's easy for us to blame, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have something. Actually, you don't have priority. If you prioritize, then it will facilitate your decision, right? This is more priority now, I'm going to do that. That's what I said, the example. I'm planning to graduate in four years, but unfortunately, in the second year, I had a problem, a family problem. I decided to stop because I, I will support. Okay, it's prioritized. I prioritize my family, then my study, then my personal life. It's a decision, right? There's no good way or bad way. That's the way that we exercise, that we practice our free will, come away. So mental factors that will limit the exercise of free will. We've got limitation mental. This is coming from this book here. We already had, I think last year we had a, a series on this book. And this book presents to us those four factors here that will limit our free will. We are going to limit our free will because of blame, guilty. So we feel guilty. I cannot, for example, I cannot do something because I'm going to think that I, I will not forgive myself later. You're blaming yourself. Repression, society, culture, right? Emotional development. So if we are not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what's the name? It's, uh, I forgot the name about the, no, it's, uh, it's a name that when you have a, Emotional development in Brazil is when when you say someone is uh, emotional intelligence. You're right. PQ. PQ. And self-esteem. Sometimes we don't trust on us. What happened? Your self-esteem is low. You don't trust that you are capable on the side and move forward in this direction. Okay, making good use of our free will. We've got some tips from in the. The gospel according to spiritism, that's coming from a protecting spirit. So what he said, I'm going to summarize here, right? So God gives to us our conscience. So listen to it. That's what he's saying here in the second sentence here. It will offer only good counsel. Talk to you. Talk to your counsel. Look inside, right? Sometimes 
you deaden by opposite it in the spirit of evil, and then it falls silent. It's not because you're not listening. It's because you're not giving attention to it. Listen to your conscience. Question it. Question it. Asking it. Ask yourself. And you will often find yourselves comforted by its counsels. The problem is that we don't have patience. We're going to ask, we think we're going to listen. So ask yourself, ask your conscience, talk to your, to your uh, guardian angel. So ask for help. And then you're going to receive. That's coming from a protecting spirit. Another from Fenelon as well. So in the same line that uh, a protecting spirit gave to us, since humans are the trustees and administrators of the wealth that God places in their hands, so God gave to us the life right here, the incarnation here. So as a strict accounting will be demanded from them regarding the use they have made of it in virtue of their free will. So, okay, you're giving you the free will, but what you did with your free will? You stay quiet at home? No, you did something. You help others, you did something. A bad use consists in using it solely for the personal satisfaction. Look at that. That's an egoism here. I'm using just for me. I'm not using for others, just for me. A good use, on the other hand, consists in all the times that it results in some good use for someone else. It's a good tip here, right? The merit is in the proportion of the sacrifice. That's what I said. I'm planning to graduate in four years. Second year, I left to take care of my mom. It's a good use. Making good use of the free will. Five tips here. And I, Am I the right person to make the choice? That's the first one. So it's, I am the right one. Is this the right time? Is the choice based on appropriate assumptions, correct or true? That's the most difficult one, right? If you remember Pilatus, when he faced Jesus front, face to face, what Pilatus asked Jesus when he faced him face to face? What is true? What is true? And the truth is in front of him. Jesus was in front of him. And he didn't see that. That's the most difficult part is to identify if I'm, I'm making a decision based on a real and actual true fact. Because every fact you've got, side B, side A, side B, and the true. Sometimes we decide it only based on side A. Sometimes based on side B, and the true is in the middle, right? This one, could this choice be good or useful for me? You need to think about it. And this one, the least but not, the less but not the least important one. Could this choice be good or useful for others? So this is based on the the three filters of Socrates. So it just increased additional tools here, two here. So if you use the, the Socrates filtering, that's the way you should choice. Of course, I'm not gonna do for every, I'm gonna turn right, okay, I'm gonna do that thing. No, of course not. But the main events in your life, you can use that thing here, okay? Okay, to wrap up here. Let's see the final message from the spirits to us. Only the great sorrows, those important events that are capable of influencing your moral evolution. We talk that thing here. Only the ones that are gonna keep capable to influence your moral evolutions are foreseen by God because they are useful for your purification and education, right? Don't blame God for bad stuff that could happen in your life because it's something that should happen for our education. Any questions here? 
So I appreciate your attention. This is long, so it's almost an hour. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you.